been one of those days. Deliberate uh, and act on resolution 2014-6, <coughs> January 2014, financiers. Mayor, everyone has received the information. I did not get any questions from anyone, and I think you can see where we're at. Michael Ann has done, a, as usual, a great job in keeping us informed of the of our financial status and working with her is approved. Uh, I'd recommend that it be approved as submitted. Okay. We're almost made our projections this month. We're close. Very close. Close. Do I have a motion? To, I will entertain a motion to uh, approve resolution 2014-6. Mayor, I'll make a motion we approve resolution 2014 06, January 2014, financial. We have a motion. Do we have a second? And a second. Uh, is there any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. All opposed? Adam C. Deliberate and act on resolution 2014-7. Budget adjustment number five for fiscal year 2014. Mayor, as you can see in there again, Ms. McLean has taken the things within the, those areas and moved them over so that they would not be in a deficit. And I think that pretty well explains that. Just line item transfers. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. And uh, I would like to make a comment that. Uh, I really like the way this was put together because mm -hmm. you can it balances out and you can see where the money came from and where it's going to. I think one of the major issues that Ms. McElan and I have tried to do is get things to you uh, where that it is better to understand right. and mm -hmm. what she started and that we had worked on the, the last time on the quarterly is giving you updates on our projects and everything so that you can see what has been completed and what we are in the process of doing. The chair will entertain the motion to approve budget adjustment number five, fiscal year 14. Uh, I'll, I'll move the um, resolu that the, uh, <coughs> the acceptance of resolution 2014-07, the budget adjustments number five for fiscal year 14. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second that. We have a motion and a second. Uh, is there any more uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Moving on. Item D. Deliberate and act on recommendation for bid awards all past <coughs> Mr. McGowan. Uh, Thank you, Mayor. And we have Jason uh, here tonight that helped put the, the bid and all together. And uh, you can see, go ahead, uh, Mr. Phillips, and thank you for all that you did. Thank you, Member of the Commission. Uh, we have the recommendation for the old past gallery roofing replacement project. As you're aware, we have a leaky roof on the building. Uh, we attempted to solicit as many bids as we could but in the end, we only have one bid from David Parker's builder for an amount of 36000 plus the Mexico Gross Receipts Tax. Uh, with the tax, it does come in under the budget of 39000 so it will fit within the available funding. And uh, just a tough time to try to, to drum up some bids. Uh, we had a few candidates that had expressed interest in us removing the bonding requirement for the job, but anything over 25000 were required to have performance. We are recommending a reward for that project uh, once the permit is received. Mr. Park will have 30 days weather permitting to complete the project. Okay, have no more um, I want to commend uh, Mr. Phillips and all that he does for the city in putting these things together. And you had before you tonight uh, copies of the lodger's tax and everything. You see that we had 39,864.35 left. And so we're 
basically undertake it, and I've told you in the past as we were getting ready to do this, then next year when we make the budget and everything, we will be working again on the outsides of the wood, the plaster also, getting the water away from the Wells Fargo building, and then if we, according to how much money and all that we have, we're taking care of the ventilation on the insides and the inside of the Wells Fargo building. Did you do an, uh, an engineering estimate on this project? Our, our estimate with, uh, we put together with Mr. Little was about 33,000, but pretty difficult to judge. The, the roof is a composite roof with a membrane section next to the parapet walls and a steel sheeted section. And there's not a, a lot of folks that do membrane roofing in this area. Mr. Park actually had to subcontract that out. So that drove the price up a little outside of what our range Okay, uh, so even though it's over the engineering estimate, you feel comfortable with this price? Yes. Thank you. So it is recommended that David Parker's builder, Incorporated, receive the bid. Yeah, Mr. Parker is a very competent contractor. He's been around here a long time, and he is local. The Wells Fargo building is uh, one of the few remaining five, five buildings of the original Wells Fargo uh, Company. Buildings in the United States. In the United States? In the United mm -hmm. States. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, Chair will entertain a motion to approve uh, uh, the award for the Old Pass Gallery roof. And I make a motion that we accept David Parker's bid for $38,857.50 for the uh, re roofing of the Old Pass Gallery. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, is there any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Item E. Deliberate and act on Lodger's tax recommendation. Mr. McGowan. Mayor, uh, you have the different requests and all that they have there. And like I said, I had before you uh, the promotional and the non-promotional uh, information concerning their finances. Uh, if you have, if you have a question, and I have, you know that we have talked with them before, and we are stressing to them that as they work on next year's budget, they try to have everything in that they possibly can, so that you know when you accept their budget that. A lot, uh, we realize that these things will come up, but try to have as many as you can done prior to the budget year so that will not have to be coming to the commission, that once we approve it, they can go ahead with the funds. And uh, is there any question on uh, what has been requested here? There's no question. The, uh, Board will entertain a, mission, uh, a motion to uh, recommend the largest tax uh, advisory board's recommendations. Do I have a, do I have a motion? Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion that we approve the largest tax recommendations. We have a motion. Do we have a second? A second. If a motion and a second, uh, is there any more discussion? The information that you have for us. Yes, ma'am. Uh, this seventeen thousand dollars from the contingency fund year to date does not. These have not been encumbered. Correct. Mm -hmm. No, this would be added to what the right. see there. Right. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, if there's no more discussion, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Large recommendation, tax recommendation passes. Item F, deliberate and act on a special dispenser permit for Raptone Main Street's spring for hops and vine event, beer and wine tasting, Black Mesa Winery and Comanche Creek Brewing Company. Mayor, Commissioners, 
This is uh, back to Main Street's annual, one of the more successful annual fundraising events. Um, we do have this in the museum, and it's turned into um, token glasses and cheese and um, some fun games to, to kind of highlight what a fantastic asset this museum is. Um, unfortunately, this year, historically, we have utilized a local and um, this year we decided to go a different route. The brewers and vineyards have a little bit different set of rules um, in the state of New Mexico. So we reached out to them and they agreed to come in and kind of showcase what they had to offer. I think that's really good. Thank you. Are there any questions? Uh, Chair will entertain a motion to uh, uh, approve the special dispenser permit for Rapto Main Street Spring for Hops and Vine event. Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion that we approve the special dis dispenser permits for the Rapto Main Street Spring for Hops and Vine event. We have a motion. Do we have a second? second. We have a second. <coughs> Is there any more uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. Item Thank G. You. Mayor, on the item G, if I could interrupt here and interject that we will not act upon that tonight, but I want to tell everyone I was with the lawyer today. We called Mr. Holman, and uh, Mr. Douglas has been out of state, so they have not had the time to get the agreement signed. They said that they will take care of the agreement, they will take care of the taxes that is on the land, and that they will be getting a clear title, and uh, we will should have everything together, hopefully then, uh, for the March 11th meeting. So I am just uh, want to give all of you that information. I told you before that we might not have it signed by today. And with him being out of state, we were unable to take care of that. Okay, do we need a motion to table this item? The chair will entertain a motion to table item H, uh, act an uh, agreement between City of Red, um, as you were, agreement between Andy Holman, Vera Holman, William Douglas, and Vivian Douglas, DBA Alpha Cal, and Clark Avenue Apartments. I move to postpone the action on this item until the March 11th meeting or until all documents are in order. We have a motion to postpone. Second. We have a second. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Item H. <coughs> Deliberate and act on agreement between the City of Raton and the Raton Police Officers Association. Effective date. July 1, 2014 through June 30th, 2016. Mr. McGowan. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, all of you have had a copy of this. I'd like to briefly go through. I'd like to thank uh, uh, Chief Cisneros and Mr. Campbell uh, in their negotiation with the police department. And we'll be using Mr. Campbell and uh, uh, Chief Matthews as we We'll be doing the fire department's uh, negotiation here starting in March. If you remember, last year was the first year we were able to get one, and but it was only for one year, and so we will be doing that uh, with the chief and, and Mr. Campbell. Uh, the main things that I'd like to bring out to you in this, if you will go to page four, uh, on the on the wages, you see that we're given a 2% this year and a 2% next year. If you will then, everything else has been the same. I'll try to make sure that I, if you go to the very next page, page 5 for longevity, uh, the 3 to 5 years uh, stayed at 50 a month. Then we did have 5 before they went I guess five through nine. 
Now we're saying 6 through 10 is 75, where it was 70 before. And now we have 11 uh, through 15, which used to be 10 through 14, but 11 through 15 would be 100, where it was 80 before. And so then over uh, the 15 years where we had 90 before will be 125, and then over the 21 will be 150. So uh, that is the changes that we have there and added uh, the 21 years in there uh, to go into the 150. Hopefully that we can keep the people uh, uh, by doing this. Uh, if you go to page 7, the one change that was made on the clothing allowance, it's always been $1,500, but the brand new hires, we've moved to 2000 Chief uh, Cisneros is telling me because of the, uh, the equipment cost now, the uniform cost now, that our first year people that we needed to go to that. So we have agreed to that, that we'll go to 2000 uh, if you will look at the very next page, page 8, uh, I've been telling you all along that we've done away with the combined leave, as I've stressed several times, and I, uh, you know, we had a $400,000 liability and zero budgeted. It is taken out in uh, Ordinance 3324 of our uh, personnel file. That is what has been put in here for vacation and sick. So that you know the other is taken out, this has been put in. Then I think the very last one that, that deals with anything is that we did add on page 16 uh, the educational incentives, uh, $600 a year if they have an associate, 1,200 bachelors, 1,800 masters and postmasters doctoral at 2,400. And those are the only differences in uh, the cost that would be coming uh, to the city. And it is recommended. They've already approved it, and it is recommended that uh, the city do approve this for the two years. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Are there any more questions for Mr. McGaugh? Uh, does the education incentive have to do with law enforcement, or can it be a master's in chemistry, or a doctorate in chemistry? Well, ma'am, me personally, it could be anything. Okay. That's the intent of this. Yes, ma'am. Right. Just an incentive that, please, if they're going, it's going to have to help. Okay. Of course, that's the old educator. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm prejudiced, I admit it. Are there any more questions? The chair will entertain a motion to uh, uh, ratify the agreement between the city of Raton and the Raton Police Officers Association for the effective dates July 1, 2014 through June 30th, 2016. Mr. Mayor, I'm making a motion that we ratify the agreement between the City of Raton and the Raton Police Officers Association. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, is there any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Item I, City Manager's Report. Mayor, Commissioners, thank you. Uh, as we started a few months ago, uh, putting board appointments on each time because a lot of times it comes up at the last minute. We do not have any tonight, but Miss Tricia will be hosting in the 1st of March all of the vacancies we have because a lot of the terms have expired. And just want to encourage everyone to become involved, and we can't thank all the volunteers that we have right now for what they do for the city. Next item, <coughs> Mayor, election information. Ms. Tricia had some information that the mayor gave you on precinct workers and administration of vote in office. I just want to remind everyone that early voting ends Friday, this Friday the 28th at 5 o'clock, and election day is March the 4th. 
from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. at St. Joseph Parish Hall, Precincts 10 and 17 through 22, and Raton Convention Center, Precincts 11 through 16. We encourage everyone to please get out and vote. Next item, uh, commissioners, the capital outlay legislating, legislation, excuse me, please, waiting the governor's signature. We received 300000 for Lake Maloya Dam outlet improvements and 200000 for drainage systems and street repair. I want to thank Mr. Campbell, Mr. Berry, Mr. Phillips, and Ms. Michael Ann and all the advisory personnel for helping put our requests together. It's been years since we'd received anything, and so we do appreciate it. I want to thank the commissioners and Mr. Reed for talking to Representative Roche and Senator Campos and everyone involved. Uh, we do appreciate all of your help, General Cisneros, uh, Sarah Montoya. I do not know why our transfer station was left out. Uh, I know they had talked with Mr. Campbell, and we thought things were good, but I guess since we're one of the last ones in the state, uh, everyone else had gotten theirs prior, so we were a little late getting out of the chute to try to get things done. Uh, we'll just leave it at that. But we do have, as you look in your finances that we give to you, the environment that fund that we have. And I was talking with <coughs> Ms. Michael Ann today. We know we have a 1 16th tax that brings in that money. And as you look, we have a little less than 300000 the board had approved, uh, the board, excuse me, the commission had approved last time on when we uh, readjusted our loan that we have 400000 in our building. We will use some of this money, whatever is needed, when Mr. Phillips and Mr. Berry put out our bids on that when we get to that. This will be money that we use to do that because the main thing, we need to go ahead and when we make these decisions on our uh, transfer station all. If we have the funds, we want to do it correctly the first time and not have to go back uh, again. So I'm just uh, letting you know that this is what we would be doing. Uh, did not uh, forewarn uh, Mrs. Mance, but would you like to update us on saving the chief? Saving the chief. <laughs> The, um, no, I'm not talking about my Indian grandchildren. <laughs> the, um, what happened in the legislature was the, the bill that was introduced in the House passed the, uh, passed the House was sent to the Senate. And when it got to the Senate, it was pretty well the last hour. And I don't think they had time to debate it or to, to uh, try to pass it. So what they very cleverly did, at least I think it's clever, they uh, included it in, in the budget. And what that means is they included $50,000 to fund a, um, an advisory committee or a study that would make sure there's no problems with litigation on this bill. In other words, the uh, anti-donation uh, clause from New Mexico or any other problems. And uh, the other thing that happened was when it was uh, being uh, debated in the in the House, actually in committee, uh, the uh, person that's in charge of DOT, which is Tom Church, said that uh, DOT would fund the economic impact study. <coughs> so we will, you know, some people feel that you know a lot didn't happen. I feel like I personally, I feel like a whole lot happened. For one thing, we made the legislature uh, informed about this problem. And the second thing, we did get funds for the funding for the studies, which are very important to the legislature before they pass a bill that uh, says that we're going to spend $4 million a year for the next 10 years to make sure that the tracks are in good running shape. They want good, hard evidence that this is necessary. And so I feel like uh, we, we made a lot of progress this year. Well, I'd like to thank uh, Commissioner Mance and County Commissioner Sobel for all that they have done on this. And I think the main thing, as I told Mr. Block today when he called, the main 
thing that we did this year was educate the legislators and educate the people of New Mexico of the importance, and especially the northern area of New Mexico. So thank you very much. Uh, next item, the fiscal agent, Ms. Michaelham, went to Taos to receive training, and we were informed that RPS, because of their findings, could not be our agent. Also, North Central COD could probably not be used. I am in discussion with County Manager Patricia Gonzalez and County Commissioners. Uh, Ms. Michael Ann, uh, Commissioner Segata, Mr. Phillips all met with the uh, uh, County Manager, Ms. Gonzalez, today going over things because we have things with uh, aging uh, with some grants there that uh, Mr. Segata has at Springer that will go out in June. Uh, Ms. Gonzalez and the county has been very helpful. They're wanting to help in any way. Our major problem that we have right now in talking with Ms. Michael Ann and everyone is coming up with an MOU. They do not have an example uh, to even go by, but we are working on it and we'll try to get something in the works as soon as we can either them give us some direction or we give them some direction and, and come up with something. So uh, I don't want you to think that we're not trying to get this put together and, and get our act together. And as you know, and I will inform you more at the next meeting, uh, RCI will be coming for training and then we'll be having them come back. And uh, Ms. Michaelan knows that whatever we need to do for them to come in, if we need to bring Heinfield Meach back uh, to help us in any way to get this settled this year, that is our major goal, and, and we're going to do everything we possibly can and use every avenue to do that. So that uh, catches you up to date to where we are at this point, and we will keep you informed. Next item is financial planning. I know that you've heard... Uh, a lot of the negatives that I've given the last two or three meetings, I have given you and the candidates very various alternatives to increase our revenue. I am working on other avenues, and uh, I will be coming to you or giving you the information. Please be advised that definite actions will need to be taken. We need to become more proactive and not reactive. We just found out that... Uh, our Affordable Care Act, some of the taxes in them have just come into place as of January 1st, and we are now getting the bills on our insurance, a 4.2% increase uh, on the 500 uh, deductible personnel and 4.95% increase on the 1500. So I've been trying to let you know we did not, we knew there were going to be things happening and it is now happening. So just wanted to uh, make sure that you are aware of this. Next item, uh, commissioners, I've been in touch with nearly everyone, only one person I have not been, a, uh, have been in touch with, but I've been in touch with all of you and the candidates except Mr. Simpson. We will have a special meeting on March the 5th at 12 o'clock for the three commissioners that uh, will continue and whoever the two elected are uh, will come even though they will not be sworn in unless an incumbent has been elected which they are still in power until the other is and that we will have uh, the interviews the commission uh, will be doing the interviews on March the 5th, 12 o'clock, Ms. Patricia will host the agenda. We have two in-house uh, people that have applied for the city manager's position, and uh, we will start the proceedings on that day. Did the, uh, the personnel that applied for the position uh, give you a resume or any? Yes, ma'am, and I uh, am going to give them to you. Once we set this tonight, knowing this is what's going to happen, you will get them tomorrow. Okay. Thank I you. do have them. Yes, ma'am. 
And, Ms. Tricia, if you'll make sure that we have it posted for the special meeting. And the reason that we went ahead and set it at 12 o'clock, I didn't realize it at the time that we have safety meeting that day in here till 12 o'clock. Uh, so we will go at 12, and I do know that Mr. Finelli said that he can push it back a little bit uh, on this time that he has to leave to go to work. Last item, uh, Mayor, Commissioners, I'd like to thank the County Manager, Ms. Gonzalez, and the County Commissioners, uh, Newton, Sauvel, and Maldonado for hosting the Colfax County Day at the Legislature. Representative Ross did attend, and we had Mayor Ledoux and Commissioners Mance and Sagata and Mr. Campbell attending the meeting, and I want to thank all of you for that. With that, thank you. Thank you, Mr. McGowan. And thank uh, the citizens for attending. We really appreciate the motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. First motion and a second. Uh, uh, all in favor? Aye. This, uh,